Okay, this is Pete over at DIY Auto School. Now, uh, we're working on our Mini Cooper. It had a rear end collision uh, accident. Uh, mild collision at that. Now, what, uh, uh, what, what the new guy's doing back here, Rich, we're going to call him Rich today because he's actually doing a good job, or trying to, but uh, that's another day over at SWRNC. And, uh, and if you want to see how Rich is actually doing, go over there and visit SWRNC on YouTube. And you'll find all out about it. But today, he is going to be a technical assistant. Uh, Rich, hello. Yeah. Okay. Are you sanding? I'm trying to. Keep it going, bud. Keep it going. Don't stop. Okay. And uh, what we're doing is we are actually wet sanding our vehicle so we can paint it. Let's go ahead and see what Rich is doing and see if he can even figure out what he's doing. Welcome to... DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. So what we got here is, uh, Rich is actually feathered out, if you can see how it feathers out, okay, it fades, that's a fade. And he's also went up here with the 400, okay. That's where he's going to stop with 400. And he's also came across here and feathered all this out in this area, if he can use his squeegee. And while he's doing that, I'd like to say, a squeegee is basically what he's doing, squeegeeing the water off to inspect his sand job. Okay, you don't have to get fancy with the squeegee, just squeegee the water away, and it will dry. Looking good, Rich, thank you. Okay. Then, what we're doing here is we're getting all the imperfections out from our primer. Okay, if you look right here, you can see some deep scratches. You can also see where there, the primer was put on very heavily, and what Rich is going to do, he's going to demonstrate how to block sand, wet sand, with 400 on a primered, freshly primered area that's been sitting for two days. Okay, what Rich is doing is he is sanding all the imperfections out. Now, we put a guide coat on that. I think I showed that to you. And what he's doing is he is sanding it out until there is no guide coat left. So if you watch him sand, you will see that the black is disappearing. Okay, that's a good spot right there. Thank you. If you look right here, you can see there's still a deep scratch. Rich has to be very cautious not to break through the primer. Right. Okay. Okay, it's very important. Do not break through the primer. Uh, what we're trying to do here, we're trying to get rid of the deep scratches and also the imperfections. Okay, Rich, thank you. A little more pressure on that. A little more pressure right down in the corner there. That's exactly where we want it, okay. Alrighty then. Very good, sir. It's looking good. We got a few little imperfections and I'm sure Rich will get those out as he goes. Moving on with the video, now that Rich has shown us how to wet sand uh, spot primer area, okay, we are going to proceed with showing you how to sand the rest of the vehicle that's going to be blended in and clear coated. Can we do that, Rich? Yeah. Okay, what Rich has done, he went ahead and wet sanded our area down here, uh, where the primer area is. He went ahead and feathered it out, okay, approximately four to six inches away from our primer, so we know everything is feathered out, ready to paint. Okay, but what we are going to do, we are going to blend this paint in. We are not painting this whole panel, so what that's going to... Uh, require is that we actually scuff this area down okay we have to we have to go ahead and prep this area up so the clear coat will stick are you learning anything rich behind the camera yeah did you know that yep because when we started this project you were asking how far i wanted to go yep okay what is that there's some, two ways that i could paint this rich some do you people want, don't try and do a good job Okay, do you want me to go ahead and tell him what you're talking about? Yes. Okay, what Rich was talking about, down here now, sir. What Rich was talking about is he was thinking that we were just going to sand it to approximately this area here. We were going to blend the clear and 
the uh, paint into this area and then we would color sand and buff that area and burn the paint back into it so you'd never know. My friend Pete doesn't like doing it that way. My friend Pete is not going to do it that way. Because the proper way to do things is the right way, Rich. Okay, I don't know where you worked before with this uh, half-assed blend. We don't do that over here, sir. Okay, so we don't need to even talk about that. If we come across a panel like this, okay, and we have to blend the paint in, always remember that I clear coat the whole panel. It takes a little more supplies, it takes a little more effort, it takes a little more work. But that's the way it should be done. We are going to blend the paint to approximately this in here area. It's going to come around the corner as we blend. And we're going to have to clear coat this whole panel. Now, we have got to prep this up so the clear will stick. What we're going to do that with is a scotch bright. This is a gray scotch bright now. This is a fine scotch bright. I'm going to go ahead and tear that in half. And we got a product here called Scuff It. Okay? Do you see that, Rich? Yeah. Okay. And what Scuff It does is it actually preps our area up. Okay, this has this is actually a detergent soap designed for automotive paint. And it also has grits of sand in it. See? Microfine grits that is gonna actually sand the surface as we clean it. Okay. Once again, that's called scuff it. Look real close at it there. There it is right there. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Right here, scuff it. Okay. Let's take a look at what scuff it is. Okay, if you can look right here, you can see that it looks like hand soap. Okay, we're going to pour a little bit, not too much. We don't want to waste it. A little of this goes a long ways. Okay. Yeah, and what we're going to do, we're going to take our Scotch Bright, just like you see. We're going to go ahead, vigorously dip it in the water. Okay. We don't need that. That's rocks. Okay. You don't want to use a lot of water on this. You want to be able to use the soap. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. Okay, if you look real close, Rich, if you can get down with the camera there, you can actually hear, okay, the scuffing motion that I'm using. And you don't need to use a block on this. Be very careful with protruding objects. Right here, Rich, look what my hand is, bud. That's a protruding object. If I hit that with my hand, what's going to happen? It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Okay. So I'm going to scuff that down. I'm going to change my directions as I'm scuffing it. Okay, I'm not going to go in the same direction. And can you tell me why that is, Rich? So you can cook, because you can create, uh, not get everything properly. That's right. When you crisscross your pattern, okay, Rich was trying to explain to you, it's going to cover more area then if you just go back and forth and say you're done. Always crisscross your pattern. Okay. And you'll get more sanding out of the pad that you're using. We're going to take some fresh water out of our bucket. We're going to wet it down and squeegee at the same time. You see how I'm doing that, Rich? Yep. And if you watch very closely, you will see that the finish is now dry. Now you can come back over here, Rich. Get down on it. And paint ready. Do you see the difference, Rich? Yes. There's and as we look at a different angle, okay, you can see that the finish has been completely dulled down. Look at the difference here in this finish versus this. Nice and shiny. And now you can see that that is paint ready, clear ready, ready to go. It has been thoroughly cleaned. All the wax and grease has been removed. This has been done in real time to show you that if you use the proper tools and the proper knowledge from my friend Pete, Rich can get it done today.
Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.